All right, how you guys doing? We're going over the Xfinity Series at Richmond. So f this is a great example of where, and maybe I'm biased towards stuff in this situation, but this is where I like to look at things from how they possibly could have gone from situations that didn't happen in real life, but maybe they happened in some other dimension. You know, when you when we look back at, at the races since COVID, we're not counting 2020 because we had two back-to-back -back races. When we look at the Xfinity Series in 2021, 2022, and 2023 at Richmond, there has been one dominant team that has shown up, been fast, and who has just killed the field, okay? And that team is, when we look at that team, it is Joe Gibbs, okay? Joe Gibbs has been the fastest organization at this track under green flag speed, under leading laps, practice speed. Joe Gibbs has been the dominant team. We'll get back. I already hear you. We'll get back. We'll get back. When we look at what Ty Gibbs, what John Hernemachek was able to do, what Harrison Burton was able to do, the absolute, like, destroying the field, being in different time zones. This isn't even close, people. This isn't even close close when we look at how fast joe gibbs was in these races even in races where they didn't necessarily run away with the finish due to how the races ended due to craziness coming to the yellows when we see you know constant restart after restarts who who were the guys who were leading these races even in situations where they didn't have the lead they were able to beat previous leaders to the lead under green flag speed you know, they were able to run people down. They may not have had the pole position. They might not have been the fastest short-run car. But they were consistently people who could drive through the field, get the laps led, and be there. You know, I mean, so anyway, long story short, when we looked at the last two Richmond races post-COVID, we saw a lot of speed from the Joe Gibbs cars, okay? When we look at this race here, this is a great, and I don't have the ownership for this race, but we're going to use this of how I approached it last year, okay? And yet again, when we look at races in the past, okay, and I would encourage you, maybe you, maybe you don't like this in general, but I would encourage you to watch live scoring on DraftKings for this. Who, who cares what money you're winning, you're losing. Understand what lineup builds are scoring well in certain times. Understand what lineup builds aren't scoring well understand the impact that small things happen or big thing like whatever happens in the race it has an impact on lineups like duh but like clearly like visualize that stuff when we look at this race last year and where i was at entering this race seeing that joe gibbs had a wide variety of drivers be stupid fast in these cars yes we had ty gibbs yes we had john herman check but we also had harrison burton Joe Gibbs was the dominant team in the previous races. And so when I look back at last year's race and I see, you know, Sammy Smith was starting second. We had Nemechek offering place differential. And these guys had speed and practice that were that was backing up that, hey, these guys are going to be fast. These guys are going to cut through the field. Okay, this race starts. Sammy Smith runs down Justin Allgaier and passes him, has a significantly faster car. We get to the competition caution, because uh, we had rain and stuff, and <laughs> the Joe Gibbs cars that were faster than the field by a country mile. It is a it very similar to the previous year of the only two people who could contend for the lead were the teammates of Ty Gibbs and Nemechek. Not even close. Because we're so short on tires, the Joe Gibbs guys decide to stay out. Okay, to save a set of tires for late in the race. Little do they pay attention of like, hey, you know, Richmond is a high wear racetrack. Tires fall off very, very quickly. And in these short 34 laps that we go to the end of the stage, Sammy Smith 
and Nemechek both go from clear contenders to win this race clearly faster than the rest of the field to both being a lap down, Nemechek getting the wave around, or the lucky dog, and Sammy Smith being trapped a lap down. Okay, so, yet again, when I'm looking at my stuff, and I look at my lines, and this is a situation of, like, completely lost. It didn't make a cent here. And I look at this, and I'm like, what did I do wrong here? And I look at these builds, and I can't see anything I did wrong here. The process was there. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Anyway, the reason I'm bringing that up is when we're looking at this week's race at Richmond, okay? And let me bring this up real fast. So here's the entry list for this week. And we look at how the field fell in line last year and how it's been falling in line to where, yes, Chandler Smith led laps at Phoenix, you know, last year. He had been fast. Clearly the number three car at Richmond last year, okay? So the reason why I'm bringing it up is being aware of what could happen, what changes and everything. How drastically, di- like I don't, I don't have the optimal uh, on here. How drastically different is this optimal in this race last year? Now, yes, Chandler Smith was 10-3. But how drastically different is this optimal if the top two guys who are fastest are optimal? Um, like, Nemechek is 10-9. Sammy Smith is 10,000. With how the race should have gone, because we saw Nemechek be able to pass through the field, you know, and Sammy Smith just kept, he just couldn't get the lucky dog. Every time he'd drive through the field, he would drive... Sammy Smith would also drive through the field and then somebody else would get lapped and he just couldn't get the wave around. So Nemechek and Sammy Smith had the two best cars last year. If they don't shoot themselves in the foot, Joe Gibbs that is, how drastically different is that optimal lineup looking compared to the one we, we got in real life? Like, is that, you know, so it, at least for me, when I'm looking back at optimal lineups or if you're looking back at optimal lineups, not just for this race, but also, but usually try and pay attention or be aware of what happens, what can change. Why are certain guys not optimal? Are they just being priced out? Did something happen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, when when we look at this weekend's race, who are in the Joe Gibbs cars, okay? Who are in the dominant cars that are most likely going to show up and kill the field, okay? We have, if I can get there, we have Chandler Smith, who is who has already shown us the ability to lead here? Not because he led here last year, but you take a kid who is already good at at the short tracks. Okay, you pull him up. He's already been dom. He's already been like Chandler Smith is is a true talent. Like we all know that. We take him from you know really a hunk of shit car with with colleague. We place him in Joe Gibbs stable. Who is he? He is Ty Gibbs. He is. John Hernimacek in this car. 81 is the favorite to win on Saturday. Not because he ran away or won last year. It's because he's in the dominant car. He's he's in the fastest car that they are going to give somebody in this. Past that, who else is in the Joe Gibbs cars? Creed, Taylor Gray, Eric Amarola. These cars are all top five cars. It literally just depends if these morons can drive them there. That's all it is. With that said, Sheldon Creed probably has the best chance of being the most viable of the other Joe Gibbs cars. If you are looking at potentially, or we, we, when we look at races that Joe Gibbs has had multiple cars lead in this race. Uh, we have, where where's Ty again? That's Cindric. Looking for Nemechek. No. Pass through the field. Is this one? No. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I'm missing one. What other what other Joe Gibbs car led here? We just looked at it, or maybe I didn't I didn't pay attention. Oh, maybe not. Maybe I'm just a moron. And I'm losing my mind. Yeah, he just got through the field. Let me check on that one. Anywho, Chandler Smith, Sheldon Creed, in my opinion, are your favorites to be top five contenders this week. 
Okay, I think Chandler Smith is the favorite to win this race. Past that, everybody's competing for, you know, like fifth on back. When we're looking at where the field should fall in line, past that, like Chandler Smith is on his own. I don't even see, I don't understand why nobody else would even be able to contend with him, truly, outside of local teammates. Um, past that, it is the Junior Motorsports cars. It is the Stuart Haas cars. You know, we want to talk about, I'm sure we're going to be talking about Bubba Pollard. Bubba Pollard. Okay, so if you aren't familiar with him, I want you to think of Josh Berry, okay? His skill level, his intelligence, uh, his upside in the junior motorsports cars in the Xfinity Series. And multiply that, set a multiplier of that skill level, that speed, that attention to detail by 1.15. And that is Bubba Pollard jumping in this car, okay? that I have no other opinion on that. He's not Josh Berry 2.0. He's Josh Berry, skill level, experience, what he's going to perform in that car, times 1.1. Okay, what does that equal? Somebody who has the potential of winning races, who should be running from 4th to 8th in everything he jumps into. Like, I have nothing more than that to say. Uh, do we want to play him for DFS? Literally comes down to where he's starting. Can he pay off the price tag? You know, what are the projections showing? I don't, there's no reason to talk anymore about Bubby. Bubby. Bubba Pollard past that. Um, I mean, for me, that's like the main the main thing up top is who do I want to chase? Who should be fast? It should be Joe Gibbs. I, I just don't see a reason why it wouldn't be Joe Gibbs. Um, I think Riley Herbst and Bo and Cole Custer both have the potential of being a sixth place car. You know, if, if I'm when I'm looking at this race and I'm like in my head, where's everybody going to fall in line at? Okay, it's Chandler Smith. And then you got like the group of six dudes fighting for who's going to fill the top five. And that is the junior motorsports cars. That is the um, Stuart Haas guys. And then past that, we're already like in like eighth, ninth, tenth place territory. Where does 10 seconds to love come in at? Where's Jesse Love? He's probably going to fit in like he's going to be fighting for six. Where is Austin Hill going to be? He's going to be fighting for six. Where did I say that like Bubba Pollard is going to be fourth to seventh? Like it, it doesn't even matter in that sense. Like that's where everybody should like fall in line past Chandler Smith leading past the Joe Gibbs cars leading. You know, in my opinion, this whole thing changes is if the Joe Gibbs cars are just absolutely dog water in practice and they qualify poorly, which realistically, like it's all on Chandler Smith. We got bacon boy. I thought you were done, Eric. Get out of here, you scrub, you, you, you little baby. Taylor Gray, you little baby, get out of here. What, what, like, what are we doing? We got we got all balls, no brain, Sheldon Creed up here. Like, I mean, it's it, it's wild. So, I, I don't know. For me, like, I just see, I, I see, like, Chandler Smith leading, like, 185 laps. And literally everything else is going to be dependent on where everybody is um, based on where they start and where they qualify at. I don't know. That's, that's where I'm at when I'm looking back at a, at all my stuff over here, um, all the recent races, like I just, I just don't like seriously, like n not even just recent uh, form, but like what teams are up here? Like it's it's the fast teams. That's that's all it is. Like this one came down to a lot of like restarts late in the race. We had like we had uh, we had one, two, three, we had three restarts here that just kept on taking guys out and wrecking. Okay, so like the end of this race was survival last year. Um, with that said, like, you're not going to get past Chandler Smith. Like he's a control. Car. Nobody can catch him. He's not going to get dumped. He's not in concern. They keep wrecking. Like, look at the guys who are wrecking here. Okay. These are all guys who are like actually fast, actually competing for spots, you know, actually like in this range here, just wrecking and getting stupid and stuff in other races that has, has a pretty good tendency if I'm not mistaken. Well, this one was a, uh, Clusterfuck as well. A lot of restarts on this one. This is so this is nuts, man. And that still happened. We still had Joe Gibbs. We still had Ty Gibbs lead 67. We still had Nemechek get through the field even with all these restarts and stuff. Does it even matter? Does it truly? Like, looking at this, man, does this even matter? Like, I, I mean, you know, we're looking at three races. One went green with nothing happening. The other two had violent violent restarts at the end of the race 
that were not dictating guys running up top. Like all, I mean, you, you might want to argue, or I, I would be listening to arguments and stuff, but like, good car, good car, good car, good car, good car. Like, that is not a shocking top five. We got Hemrick. Okay. Everybody knows that Hemrick's like the biggest joke ever, but like him, colleague this year, 2021, that's a championship year in the 18 car, 17 laps, sixth place. That's where he should have finished. Ty Gibbs, that's where he should have finished. We get Brandon Brown uh, coming through. We get, Burton, Ty Dillon, Ryan Sieg, Junebug, Weatherman in the 47. Like, you tell a Mike Harmon card finished 15th. Uh, I mean, good lord, guys. Like, so when I look at this race here, my view is like, I need to figure out who's leading the laps and who's going to be in the top five. Literally everything else is wide open. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't hate any play on here because if you're slow, like when we're looking at the guys who are being brought in from like JD Motorsports and um, like what's his name? We got a beard in here. I don't know if this one had it updated on. Uh, I doubt it did. I doubt it did. I mean, we got De Benedetto back. I mean, Ryan Sieg, De Benedetto, both these morons are probably like I would project them both for like eleventh. You know, uh, just on what they do, like. Ryan Sieg is, is really good at this track, like just consistently a top five contender. Matt Benedetto is a guy who, based on his actual skill, like in these types of equipment, like this isn't top tier, this is bottom tier, he should be able to carry this like 11th, 12th, 15th. Like anything worse than 17th is like a disaster for Matt Benedetto. not fantasy-wise, like in general. But like past that, like I don't know, man. I just don't like is where I'm at. It's like yeah, it's it's pointless to go over this stuff. Like Patrick Emily, first off, we got nine, we got 39 cars here. Slowest guys going home. Past that, if you start 38th to 30th, and we have a bunch of restarts like this, and it literally just turns into a battle of attrition. Now, granted, you need to be on the lead lap to be, or you need to be within, you know, you need to be able to maintain a running position on the lead lap. Where does this fall in line? That was a lot of laps so we're getting more and more wave rounds and stuff but in this race we have 23 finish on the lead lap and the other wreck fest we have 27 be on the lead lap okay what is that indicating so if you are certainly a mid-pack organization a mid-pack team expected to be running from like 20th to 32nd let's say in that range okay you have the potential of kind of locking yourself in that range because we're going to have other guys being trap a lap down. You have a chance of if you are a guy who is running 28th all day and we start having restart after restart after restart and these guys start wrecking and stuff, you can finish 21st, 20th on these late race cautions when we start running into issues and stuff. We can have a situation, yes, you might be a slow car, but if you start dead last, we'll use Patrick as an example here, um, or like, I mean, Leland isn't going to be there, but like Leland is like, basically dirt dirt cheap if you need to uh pay down and stuff and you start 38th 37th okay and we start getting a lot of wrecks and a lot of people crashing out where are the guys starting dead last where are they finishing at let's just go ahead and, and take a gander at where the back half of the field is starting because this is yet again you can't fake speed at short tracks okay so like ao <laughs> in the jimmy means car Three laps down, finishes 36. This guy passes six cars by just surviving, by just being there. CJ is trash. He wrecks out. Good car, able to get through the field. David Starr and NBM go from 37th to 28th. Uh, basically, no gain, no loss here. No gain, no loss here. Mason Massey, 37th to stayed on the lead lap, able to survive chaos late in the race. Like This is Mason Massey as your guy who's running 28th all day. He doesn't go a lap down. He's able to get through the field. Good car. Mike Harmon, yet again, like able to stay on the lead lap in survival late in the race. Um, gets trapped lap to actually run through ignition issues. We got this washed up old fuck. This has been going from 30th to 14th. Um, JG Alien, the Rick Ware car back in the day. And by this point, we're at cars who are like actually going to compete to stay on the lead lap. Uh, when we continue to go through and we see these guys get crushed, well, we see very little changes back here because these guys just aren't able to really do much because um, they're trap lap down. There's not a lot of um, survival. But when we look at this race here, last year's race, okay, so right off the bat, 
this is a race to where everybody's still running, which is wild. Uh, there's there's no DNFs at all. But Mason goes from last to gaining seven positions, gain six positions, gain four positions, gain, what is that, eight? You know, Jeffrey Earnhardt in the Alpha Beta Prime car, very similar to who's in the Alpha Beta Prime. We got Poole, we got um, Ellis, we got, where's the other, where's the other? Where is the other Alpha Beta Prime car? Is there just two of them? I guess there's just two of them. So we got like Ellis and Poole. Like Ellis fits this category just perfect as, uh, uh, one. as, um, as like Ern- Jeffrey Earnhardt just staying on lead lap, surviving late race restarts. And so basically what I'm saying is like, I don't think your speed truly matters. It matters up top if you're, if you're going to be able to compete to get laps led and stuff. But if you're in the back of the field, like you're, you're live wire, man. Like you are able to get there. You can work. Doesn't even it literally doesn't even matter who you are. Um, if you're starting last and this race does get crazy, you know you could see Cram, Emily, Baird, Gase, Ellis, Poole, Perkins, Balicki, any of these guys work. You know, like and so let's wait for scoring. <laughs> let's wait for the starting grid. Like let's just see what the projections say. I don't know. That's where I'm at. Um, and kind of how I how I look at stuff. Maybe it's helpful. Maybe it's not. Anyway, that's my that's my preview for Saturday. So like, anyway, I'll see you guys at the live show on Saturday to discuss this in further detail. I'm sorry if this didn't help you, but like, it's it's Richmond, you know. F- focusing on who's going to lead up top is the main thing, and that should be Chandler Smith. Who's going to work at the bottom? I mean, it's open to anybody, and uh, I don't know that that that's it in my opinion. That's uh, that's it. So I'll see you guys later.